Hello. Today's podcast is on ancient and early medieval India, chapter three. India is a land of rich history, diverse cultures, and profound intellectual and artistic achievements. In this podcast, we will embark on a journey through time, exploring the major civilizations, cultural developments, and historical milestones that shaped ancient and early medieval India. Now, Join me as we explore the captivating story of this vibrant and influential region. Our journey, of course, as we know from our text, begins with the Indus Valley Civilization, one of the world's earliest urban civilizations that thrived from around 2600 BCE to 1900 BCE. The Indus Valley Civilization, also known as the Rapid Civilization, was characterized by sophisticated urban planning, advanced drainage systems, and a script that has yet to be fully deciphered. The cities of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa are among the major centers of this remarkable civilization. The Indus Valley Civilization engaged in long distance trade, had a complex social structure, and showcased remarkable artistic and craftsmanship skills. While much about their society and culture remains a mystery, their legacy serves as a testament to the ingenuity and achievements of ancient India. The Indus Valley Civilization, one of the earliest urban civilizations in the world, emerged among the banks of the Indus River in present-day Pakistan and Northwest India. The presence of a reliable water source and fertile land contributed to the growth of well-planned cities, extensive trade networks, and sophisticated craftsmanship. The geography of South Asia presented both challenges and opportunities to ancient Indian societies, Floods, droughts, and other natural disasters were constant threats to agricultural communities. However, the people of ancient India developed sophisticated irrigation systems, water management techniques, and adapted agricultural practices to overcome these challenges. The presence of mountain ranges and diverse ecosystems also contributed to the development of spiritual and philosophical traditions in ancient India. The mountains, forests, and rivers were seen as sacred and plain a significant role in religious and cultural practices of the time. The geographical diversity of India has contributed to its cultural and environmental richness. India is known for its linguistic and ethnic diversity, but numerous languages, religions, and cultural traditions coexisted within its borders. The varied geographical features have influenced the development of different regional cuisines, art forms, and architectural styles. Now, as we go deeper into the fascinating history of India's first major civilization, the Indus Valley Civilization, we now see that it spanned from approximately 2600 BCE to 1700 BCE. The ancient civilizations emerged in the fertile valleys of the Indus River and left behind a rich legacy of sophisticated urban planning, intricate craftsmanship, and enigmatic script yet to be fully deciphered. The Indus River Valley Civilization is also known as the Harappan Civilization. It was first discovered in the early 20th century through archaeological excavations in present-day Pakistan and Northwest India. Its existence and significance were initially underestimated, but subsequent discoveries reveal the magnitude and complexity of this ancient civilization. The civilization's heartland stretched from the Indus River and its tributaries encompassing parts of modern-day Pakistan and Northwest India. It extended over a vast area with, very, with major urban centers such as Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, as well as numerous smaller settlements scattered throughout the region. One of the most striking features of the Indus Valley Civilization was its advanced urban planning. The cities were meticulously laid out on a grid pattern, which, designed, which carefully designed streets, brick houses, and sophisticated drainage systems. The planners of these cities demonstrated extraordinary understanding of hydraulic engineering and sanitation evident in their well-constructed sewage and drainage systems. These cities boasted impressive structures, including monumental public buildings, granaries, and even public baths. The Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro stands as an iconic example, showcasing the civilization's emphasis on hygiene, water management, and communal life. This Indus Valley civilization flourished as a major center trade and commerce extended its influence beyond its borders. Archaeological evidence suggests that Harappans engaged in long distance trade, establishing trade links with Mesopotamia, Afghanistan, and other regions. Artifacts such as seals and pottery have been discovered in various parts of the ancient world, attesting to the civilization's commercial prowess. 
The presence of those seals and other square seals adorned with intricate engravings and writings indicates the existence of a script unique to the Indus Valley civilization. Although, as we said before, the script has not been deciphered, it points to a highly organized administrative system and perhaps a written language. The social structure of the Indus Valley civilization is believed to have been relatively egalitarian, which evidence suggested a lack of monumental structures dedicated to rulers or elites. The cities were characterized by well-planned neighborhoods, suggesting a degree of urban equality and shared sense of community. Given this absence of monumental structures, associate political authority, it is plausible to consider alternative forms of governance within the Harappan civilization. One hypothesis is that local assemblies of elites, such as powerful landowners or wealthy merchants, govern each city. The assemblies could have conveyed the great hall, the, the assemblies could have convened in the great hall of the citadel, engaging in deliberations and decision making processes that shape the social and economic life of their respective communities. The rapid civilization, with its uniformity in urban planning and standardized weights, presents us with intriguing questions about the political organizations of beliefs. While we know that there is an absence of, of palaces or temples that challenges our understanding of traditional power structures, as we've learned in the past, Enigmatic soapstone sculptures and the possibility of local elite assemblies suggest alternative forms of governance within the civilization. As our knowledge continues to evolve, we strive to uncover more pieces of the puzzle and gain deeper understanding of this remarkable ancient civilization that once thrived in the Indus Valley. The decline of the Indus Valley civilization remains a topic of debate among historians and archaeologists. Various factors have been proposed, including environmental changes, natural disasters, or even internal conflicts. Regardless of the reason for its decline, the Indus Valley civilization left a lasting impact on the subsequent cultures and civilizations of the Indian subcontinent. But the religious beliefs of the Indus Valley civilization remain somewhat elusive, as their language does. But the artifacts and symbols they have left behind provide us with intriguing insights into the spiritual world. As we continue to study and interpret the archaeological evidence, we deepen our understanding of the complex religious fabric that shaped the lives of the people of the Indus Valley civilization. Now, this brings us to what now is in our chapter is referred to as the Long Vedic Age. The Long Vedic Age emerged following the decline of the Indus Valley civilization and marked the arrival of Indo-Aryan people into the Indian subcontinent. These pastoral communities followed the decline of the Indus Valley civilization. The Vedic period emerged around 1500 BCE. The Vedas was the sacred text that was composed during this period and are the oldest scriptures of Hinduism and provide insights into the early religious and philosophical beliefs of ancient India. The Vedic period witnessed the arrival of these Indo-Aryans who brought with them a pastoral and warrior culture. Vedic rituals, sacrifices, and hymns played a central role in their religious practices. Over time, the Vedic tradition evolved, giving rise to various schools of philosophical thought and the concept of dharma, moral and social order. The transition from the Indus Valley civilization to the Vedic period was characterized by cultural assimilation and the gradual spread of indo aryan influence across the region. The Vedas, the sacred scripture of ancient India, are the cornerstone of the long Vedic age. These texts, composed in Sanskrit, encompass a vast collection of hymns, rituals, and philosophical treatises, divided into four main collections, the Rig Veda, the Samaveda, the Ajura Veda, and now Thura Veda. The Vedas provide profound insights into the religious beliefs and rituals of the time. The Rig Veda is the oldest and most revered Vedic text consists of hymns dedicated to various deities and natural forces. It consists of 1,028 hymns addressed to the Vedic people's pantheon of gods, but it wasn't written down until 500 BCE. Rather, from the early as the beginning of the second millennium BCE, these hymns were orally composed and transmitted by Aryan poet seers, eventually becoming the reserve of a few priestly clans who utilized them for the specific religious functions of pleasing higher powers. 
The religious beliefs of the long Vedic age revolved around polytheism, with that Parthenon of deities worshipped by the Vedic people. The god and goddesses depicted in the Rig Veda were associated with natural forces and cosmic elements. These humans like power bind all of the force natural phenomena so close to a people living out on the plains were associated with the forces of light, good, and order. By chaining hymns to them and sacrificing in the correct way, the Aryan priests might secure blessings for the people or prevent the demons and spirits on earth from causing sickness and death. The many prominent deities venerated for their power, protection, and control over different aspects of life. Indra was among the most beloved of the Vedic gods. As a god of war and the storm, and as a king of gods, Indra exemplified traits men sought to embody in their lives. He is a great warrior who smites demons and enemies, but who also provides generously for the weak. Agni, another favorite, was god of fire and household earth. Agni summons the gods to the sacrifice and as intermediary between gods and humans brings a sacrificial offering to them. The social structure of the long Vedic age was characterized by the emergence of Varna, a system of social classification based on the occupation and birth. The four main Varnas were the Brahmins, which were considered the priests and scholars, the Kshatriyas, warriors and rulers, the Shias, agriculturalists, traders and, mer and merchants, Shudras, laborers and servants, the Varna system formed the basis of the social hierarchy and division of labor within society. Especially with this division, family and kinship ties were vital in the Vedic society. With patriarchal family structure prevailing, marriage is considered a sacred union and played a significant role in the social fabric and the performance of rituals and religious obligations was highly Highly valued. Toward the end of the Long Vedic Age, there is a shift in philosophical thought occurred with the emergence of the Upanishads. These texts, considered philosophical appendages to the original Vedas, explored profound questions about the nature of reality, the self, the universe. The Upanishads delved into the concepts such as Brahman, which is ultimate reality, Atman, the individual self, and the pursuit of spiritual liberation or moksha. The Upanishads challenged the external focus rituals of the earlier Vedic period, emphasizing introspection, meditation, and the pursuit of spiritual knowledge. These philosophical developments laid the foundation of later schools of Indian philosophy, influencing the evolution of Hinduism, Buddhism, and of course, Jainism. The Long Vedic era or age represents a significant phase in ancient Indian history. The composition of the Vedas, the prevalence of polytheistic beliefs and sacrificial rituals, the emergence of the Varna system and the philosophical development seen in the Upanishads all shaped religious, social and cultural landscape of ancient India. As we explore further, we'll see a deeper appreciation of all of these great beliefs, traditions, and ideas that have shaped Indian civilization throughout the millennia. Now, as we move forward through our chapter, we would like to move forward to really understand which is now a major part of Indian civilization, and that is the caste system. The caste system. To understand the caste system, we must first contextualize it within the broader historical landscape of ancient India. The caste system, of course, originated during the Vedic period with roots in the social and religious practices of the time. It evolved over centuries, becoming a complex system that permeated all aspects of life. That caste system, which also goes back to the earlier mentioning of what we discussed as the Varna, divided society into distinct social groups or Varnas based on a person's birth and occupation. Now, as we establish this caste system, we see that those four main varnas are still a major part of everyday life in the Indian subcontinent. Brahmins is now the priestly class responsible for religious rituals, studying and teaching the Vedas, and providing spiritual guidance. 
is Shatria, the warrior and ruling class entrusted with the protection of society and the governance of the kingdom. Vashia, the merchant and agricultural class involved in trade, farming, and commerce. The Shudras, the labor and servant class responsible for manual labor and providing services to the higher Varnas. The highest Varna, of course, is the Brahmins, and they enjoyed the most privileged and held considerable power in religious and intellectual domains. Chatrias held political and military authority, while Vashias engaged in economic activities. Shudras are at the bottom of the hierarchy, and they face social and economic restrictions, often performing menial tasks. This, sas this caste system, of course, is very rigid. It only allowed for limited social and occupational mobility within one's own varna. Individuals could improve their social standing through education, skill acquisition, and performing virtuous acts. However, moving between varnas were ex was extremely rare and generally not allowed. Beyond those four varnas, there was a group outside of the varna system known as untouchables, or people that you did not touch. These individuals were considered impure and performed tasks deemed polluting to society, such as handling dead animals or cleaning sewage. They faced severe social discrimination and were excluded from many aspects of daily life. The caste system, despite its ancient origins, continues to have an impact on Indian society today. Although legally abolished in the mid 20th century, caste based discrimination and inequalities persist, challenging, the in challenging Indian's journey towards social equality and inclusivity. We will now discuss the development of ancient India's religious and philosophical landscape, especially the emergence of Buddhism. Buddhism, founded by Siddhartha Gautama, posed a profound challenge to the prevailing religious and social order of Brahmanism. Now, as we explore the origin and teachings and impact of Buddhism, it is very special to understand the context in which Buddhism emerged. We must first examine the dominant religious system of ancient India, Brahmanism. Brahmanism was centered around the Vedic rituals and sacrifices performed by the Brahmin peace. The religious authority and social dominance of the Brahmins were deeply entrenched in the social fabric of ancient Indian society. Siddhartha Gautama was born in the 6th century BCE, in present day Nepal. He belonged to a princely family, but renounced his privileged life to seek enlightenment and understand the nature of suffering in the world. After years of spiritual pursuit and meditation, he attained enlightenment and became the Buddha, meaning the awakened one. Buddha's teachings, known as the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path, form the core of Buddhism. Four Noble Truths articulate the nature of suffering, its causes, and the path to liberation from suffering. The Eightfold Path provides a guidance on ethical conduct, meditation, and and wisdom as a means to achieve enlightenment. Buddhism challenged several fundamental aspects of Brahmanism, unlike the complex ritualistic practice of Brahmanism. Buddhism emphasized inner transformation, personal responsibility, and direct experience of truth. Buddha rejected the authority of the Vedas and the caste system, advocating for a more egalitarian society. Furthermore, Buddha rejected the notion of permanent self or soul, instead propagated the concept of antiman or non-self. According to Buddhism, all phenomena, including the self, are impermanent and interconnected, leading to the dissolution of the ego and attainment of liberation. Buddhism gained significant popularity and spread rapidly throughout the ancient India and beyond. Buddhism teachings resonate with people from various social backgrounds, offering a path of liberation and a sense of purpose. The rise of Buddhism led to the decline of Brahmanism dominance and reshaped the religious and social landscape of ancient India. The appeal of Buddhism, inclusive philosophy, focused on compassion and ethical conduct, attracted followers from diverse backgrounds. And as we see, the emergence of Buddhism in ancient India posed a formidable challenge to the prevailing religious and social order of Brahmanism. Gautama Buddha's teachings offered an alternative path to liberation, emphasizing personal transformation, ethical conduct, 
and the dilution, dissolution of self. Buddhism rise had a profound impact on Indian society, promoting social inclusivity and reshaping the religious and philosophical landscape. The legacy of Buddhism continues to be felt in modern day India and beyond as its teachings continue to inspire individuals on their spiritual journeys. Moving forward in time, we encounter two significant empires that shaped ancient and early medieval India, the Mauryan Empire and the Gupta Empire. The Mauryan Empire and the leadership of Emperor Ashoka extended its influence over vast territory, promoting Buddhism and establishing a centralized administration. Ashoka's inscriptions known as the Edicts of Ashoka reflect his commitment to moral governance and peaceful coexistence. The Gupta Empire, often referred to as the Golden Age of ancient India, witnessed advancements in arts, science, mathematics, and literature. The Gupta rulers patronized scholars, resulted in a flourishing of intellectual and cultural achievements. The Gupta period marked the consolidation of Hinduism as the dominant religion in India. The transformation shaped the religious landscape of ancient India, contributing to the diversity of religious thought and practices. The interactions between Buddhism and Hinduism left a lasting impact on the culture, philosophy, and spirituality of ancient India and continues to influence religious traditions in the present day. The early medieval age in India followed the decline of the Gupta Empire, marking a period of political fragmentation and regional kingdoms. This era saw the rise of various dynasties and the emergence of powerful regional powers, which laid the foundation for subsequent Islamic invasions and the establishment of Islamic states in India. From the 8th century onward, several Islamic invasions occurred, primarily from the northwestern regions marking the entry of Islam into the Indian subcontinent. These invasions were led by Muslim armies, including the Arabs, Ghazanavads, and the Gurids who sought to expand their political and religious influence in the region. The Delhi Sultanate was characterized at this time by a combination of political, military, and cultural achievements. It introduced Islamic administrative systems, established a centralized governance structure, and encouraged the spread of Islam. The Sultans of Delhi implemented significant administrative reforms and launched military campaigns to expand their territories. The arrival of Islamic states in India brought about cultural interactions and exchanges between Islamic and, ind and indigenous Indian traditions. Persian and Arabic influence began to permeate Indian art, architecture, literature, and music. The fusion of Islamic and Indian architecture styles gave rise to many different forms of art and architecture. The establishment of Islamic states in India also led to challenges and tensions particularly in the religious and social spheres. The ruling elite, primarily Muslims, faced the task of governing a predominantly Hindu population. While there were instances of religious conflicts, efforts were made to promote coexistence and a synthesis of Islamic and indigenous, indigenous Indian traditions. The Islamic states of India left a lasting impact on the subcontinent's history and culture. They introduced new administrative systems, legal frameworks, and architectural styles. The influence of Persian and Arabic languages and literature on Indian language such as Urdu is still evident today. The Delhi Sultanate laid the foundation for subsequent Muslim empires such as the Mughal Empire, which further shaped Indian history. The early medieval age in India witnessed the arrival and establishment of Islamic states, most notably the Delhi Sultanate. These Islamic states brought significant changes to political, cultural, and social fabric of the Indian subcontinent, while the period was marked by challenges and tensions. It also saw cultural interactions and syncretism between Islamic and indigenous Indian traditions. The legacy of Islamic states in India is evident in various aspects of Indian history, architecture, and cultural heritage that continue to shape the nation today. Feudalism is now one of the main systems that came out of this medieval age. Feudalism is a system of governance and land tenure that emerged in various parts of the world during the medieval period. In ancient India, feudalism developed as a response to political decentralization and the emergence of regional powers. It involved the exchange of land for loyalty, protection, and service, 
creating a complex web of relationships between the ruling elite and vassals. Feudalism in ancient India was characterized by a pyramid-like social structure. The top was the monarch or king who held ultimate power and owned vast territories. Below the king were feudal lords or nobles who held large land estates or fiefs. These nobles, known as zamindars, acted as vassals to the king and owned military service and loyalty in return for their land grants. The nobles further subdivided their land holdings and granted smaller estates to lesser lords and warriors. These subvassals, known as samadas, served as military commanders and administrators within their respective territories. They, in turn, granted land to peasants and laborers who formed the agricultural backbone of the feudal system. Land tenure formed the foundation of this feudal system. The king and noble granted land to the vassals who divided and distributed among their sub-vassals. The land was considered the property of the king or noble and individuals held in exchange for military service, tribute, and other obligations. The obligations of the vassals included providing military support for the higher-ranking lords, participating in warfare, and maintaining law and order within the territories. Peasants, in turn, were obligated to cultivate the land, pay rent or taxes, provide labor or other services to the high-ranking lords. Feudalism in ancient India played a significant role in shaping the social order and relationship within society. The hierarchical structure of feudalism reinforced social divisions and stratification. The ruling elite, comprising the king and noble, enjoyed privileges, wealth, and power, while the peasants and laborers faced various forms of exploitation and had limited social mobility. Feudalism in ancient India, however, faced several challenges and underwent changes over time. As central authority weakened and regional powers grew stronger, the feudal lords became increasingly independent and began asserting their own authority. This led to conflicts and power struggles between different entities. Additionally, as trade and commerce expanded, urban centers grew and new ec economic opportunities emerged. The importance of land ownership as the primary basis of power and wealth began to diminish. The rise of merchant communities and the growth of urban society gradually eroded the dominance of feudal system. Feudalism in ancient India was a socio-economic system that emerged during the medieval period, characterized by that hierarchical structure of land ownership, obligations, and power relations. The feudal structure played a significant role in shaping society, governance, and relationships. As we now close out our chapter, we last want to talk about the Chola dynasty. The Chola dynasty was a powerful ruling dynasty that existed from 9th century CE to the 13th century CE in the southern region of the Indian subcontinent, primarily in present-day Tamil Nadu. The Chola Empire's military campaign extended their influence as far as Sri Lanka, the Maldives, parts of Southeast Asia, and even reached the shores of the Ganges River in North India. In addition to the military and political achievements, the Cholas made significant contributions to art, architecture, literature, and administration. They patronized the construction of magnificent temples, which stand as a testament to their architectural brilliance. The Chola dynasty stands as a testament to the power and achievement and also the cultural brilliance of ancient South India. Their military conquests, architectural marvels, patrons of the arts, and administrative excellence have left an indelible mark on history and heritage of the region. The Chola dynasty's legacy continues to be celebrated and admired for significant contributions to the cultural, political, and artistic landscape of ancient India. Although India remained a mosaic of states during the period 300 to 600 BCE, Historians recognize the time as a distinct because of the Gupta Empire, which included most of northern India and facets of the Gupta period. Society and cultural suggest that Indian civilization had matured and entered a classical age. One facet was the individual achievements in literature, the arts, and sciences, but equally as important, the lives of all members of the society were now being shaped and given meaning by political pattern. The political pattern included, for example, notions of kingship and king's dharma, as well as political hierarchy. Social institutions include the patriarch of family, varna and caste, and commercial associations in cities and towns. 
As for religious traditions, we have focused on the development of Hinduism and Buddhism and how they shape the religious landscape with their long literary and scriptural traditions, notions of Dharma and monastic and temple life. Thanks. This podcast episode has been produced under a CC by NCND license. All episodes in this series are made possible through the efforts of Lisa Naminkas, Christopher Gilson, Crescentio Jackson, Ryan Pierce, and Amelia Brister. Thank you for listening.